Schedule Report number six. Let's roll, P Dub. And now, from a non disclosed location deep within the heart of the Geek Intelligence Agency, this is the Gadget Report with your temporary host, Neil Campbell. I'm going to start by making an incredibly oversimplistic black and white statement that probably isn't true at all. There are two types of drivers. Just two. Those who trust technology enough that they'd be perfectly comfortable trusting a self-driving car and those who would be scared to death to even ride in such a car. I know life is always more complicated than that. There are shades of gray and that's what the comments are for. There are two types of people. Discuss. At TechCrunch Disrupt, Eric Schmidt from Google said, it's a bug that cars were invented before computers. Your car should drive itself. It just makes sense. Why the world's greatest search company is working on self-driving cars is probably as simple as they're doing it because they want to do it and they have engineers smart enough to work on doing it. They're doing it because they can. Google's automated cars work by taking advantage of cameras, radar sensors, and lasers to detect what's around the car. If you're skeptical, let me ask you a question. What's more precise, your vision, your hearing, or a laser? So far, Google's technology has driven over a million miles with very limited human intervention. There's been a single accident. It involved one of the cars being rear-ended by a human-driven car. Google's not alone. BMW is working on autonomous drive technology too. The new technology brings a level of passenger safety that can never be matched by even the best professional driver. The tech can sense and analyze everything happening 360 degrees around the car. There are no blind spots and the computer is never distracted. A car capable of full autonomous operation can contain as much as $200,000 worth of gear, so most of us won't be enjoying passive rides for a while. People working on the technology say we'll see an incremental introduction of driver assistance options that'll roll out in the next 15 years. You can already get a car that parallel parks itself. There are luxury cars that will sense activity in a blind spot and move the car out of danger, and other cars break in cruise control when they sense a slow down in traffic up ahead. Automation will make driving safer and travel more enjoyable. I hope within my life we get to the point where drivers don't have to be behind the wheel at all because I hate driving and I'm not very good at it. A company called Lit Motors is bringing a completely different kind of technology to a completely new kind of vehicle. It's like a motorcycle in that it only has two wheels and it's like a car because it's fully enclosed. It has a seat rather than a saddle and a steering wheel rather than handlebars. The Lit C1 is being developed as a fully electric vehicle with two gyroscopes that keep the C1 upright even if it's hit by a car. The target price of the Lit C1 is $16,000 and the visionary behind it, Daniel Kim, hopes to have them available within four years. Go Daniel, go! That's a Gadget Report. I want to once again thank those of you who have gone to iTunes.GadgetReport.tv to subscribe and write a brief recommendation. I hope everyone who loves Geek Brief TV has a chance to see what I'm doing with Gadget Report and I need your help to spread the word. Your rec- recommendations in iTunes are needed to get the attention of the podcast team at Apple so they can feature the show. Thanks also to those of you who have gone to produce.gadgetreport.tv to donate. I'm at Neil Campbell. I'll be back in a bit with more gadget news.